Good morning. Uh, we're going to uh, start today with a little presentation on an introduction to electrical signature analysis. My name is Howard Penrose. Uh, I have several years, or a number of years, I should say, in uh, electrical signature analysis and several decades uh, in the electric motor and electric motor repair industry. Uh, I am a vibration analyst, infrared analyst, amongst other things. Uh, I find that um, electrical signature anal uh, analysis adds another uh, tool to your toolbox, so to speak. I uh, want to make sure people understand that it is not there to replace the other technologies, in particular vibration analysis. Uh, that's often um, uh, an unfortunate thought uh, for some people. Uh, Success by Design is my company. I actually started it in 2001 as a publisher. I have worked for other companies in the meantime, including Altest Pro, which is a motor diagnostics uh, vendor, and then T-Solutions uh, performing uh, military um, uh, reliability services, and then finally fired my last boss to, uh, to and then changed Success by Design to reliability services company as of January 1st of this year. My clients include General Motors, U.S. Steel, and others, um, everything from building envelope uh, reliability and maintenance uh, up to and including uh, for U.S. Steel the development of a motor diagnostics program or overall motor management program. And that's my background. Today we're going to discuss an introduction to electrical signature analysis summary theory and then uh, go through some signatures so you understand what it can tell you. Uh, we will be open to questions through the presentation, in particular at the end as well. The class is scheduled for 11 to noon, um, but uh, I am not locked into that for any reason, so we can go beyond that a little bit if, the, if there are enough questions. Typically, when we try to troubleshoot things as electrical specialists, we run into certain problems, and those problems in the past have been, have been technology related. Uh, vibration analysis, uh, ultrasonics, and other technologies were primarily built around the mechanical industry. So this little flow chart was provided to me um, from a, an electrical reliability specialist a few years ago, and when I first saw it, I thought, interesting, it definitely describes the way the ind industry has been going. Now the primary reason for this type of trouble uh, resolution chart is primarily that uh, the tools were lacking on the electrical side. If something was detected, say uh, the possibility of a broken rotor bar by vibration analysis, and they said it's an electrical problem, what did the electrical technologist show up with? Usually a multimeter and a mega, maybe an oscilloscope. If they were lucky, they showed up uh, with a uh, uh, with a an uh, analog clamp-on ammeter. The motor system that we address, both electrically and mechanically, is more than just the electric motor itself. I define an electric motor system as everything from the three-phase incoming power through the equipment controls, whether that be a VFD, start, stop button, uh, whatever, the motor itself, the coupling that then attaches that motor, whether it's belted or direct or geared, to the load and then finally the process. The electric motor itself uh, is a prime mover of industry. Virtually everything um, since uh, 1880, uh, yeah, 1888 has shifted from steam-driven systems more and more to electrically driven systems, up to and including uh, one of the new programs in the military is the DDX. It's a stealth destroyer. It's, it's public knowledge uh, system where there will be Nothing but electrical systems are even replacing the hydraulics with electric motors. 
the standard AC induction motor, which we'll focus on. I will cover a little bit of DC in pattern recognition, but on this part, we'll focus primarily on the AC induction motor. Consists of a number of key components that are the same whether I am looking at an integral horsepower AC induction motor up to and including a machine tool motor or servo motor. The primary components are the frame, which hold the motor together, the stator core, which is made up a number of a number of laminations that vary anywhere from 19 to 39, uh, well nowadays 39 thousandths thick, uh, layered together that hold the windings. The windings are in a three-phase induction motor uh, separated 120 electrical degrees from each other. Those are there to generate a magnetic field into the air gap so that you can interact with the rotor. The rotor also has layered laminations of steel um, and has rotor bars that pass through it that are shorted at either end with a shorting ring. In small, uh, small electric motors, that will normally be um, cast aluminum. Now there are a few cast copper. Uh, in larger machines, that'll tend to be a copper alloy with a shorting ring uh, welded on either side. The rotor itself is held centered inside the electric motor, or as centered as possible, uh, using a shaft and a set of bearings on either end for most polyphase motors. This whole concept was developed and patented by Nikola Tesla in 1888. Uh, he passed off the patents to Westinghouse, who then built the, the patents covered everything from alternating current power generation to transformers and distribution systems up to and including the AC induction motor. Tesla actually preferred 25 hertz uh, as the optimum frequency. We went to 60 hertz, of course. How an AC induction motor works is simply an interaction of two magnetic fields between the stator and the rotor. The question I really have for you, I know you won't answer, but the question I have is what is the purpose of an electric motor? What is its real purpose other than being a fuse when something goes wrong? Its real purpose is to change electrical energy to mechanical torque. Now, if we back up through the system up to the generator, the generator, most generators, take and convert mechanical torque to electrical energy. This provides an extremely efficient way to distribute energy across long distances. Now, I'm going to have a number of animations. I will be sending out a survey after this course asking how well they showed up. Um, this first one, there's a green bar rotating inside um, an image of a stator. This is supposed to represent rotating fields that are generated by bringing in three-phase current or three-phase voltage to the motor, which is developed into a current uh, inside the windings, and the current is directly related to a rotating field. This rotating field rotates inside the motor at a pace of 120 times the line frequency divided by the number of poles of the machine. Poles are always in pairs because you have a north pole and a south pole. So uh, if I were looking at a 60 hertz two-pole electric motor, that would be 120 times 60 or 7200 divided by 2 or 3600 RPM motor. But as we all know, when I look at the nameplate of a polyphase induction motor, I do not normally see that, say, 3600. It will say something like 3450 and so on. There's a reason for that. This next slide, once it shows up, should uh, show a squirrel cage, but it actually represents rotor bars and the shorting rings, with two um, fields passing around it. Uh, it may be um, a little spotty on your end, but um, please bear with it. Uh, this is an extremely important picture, or extremely important animation. As my fields rotate, whenever I have a magnet cross a conductor, I generate a current flow. Uh, 